Welcome to this tutorial on GHS basic hydrostatics. Tutorial number 440 focuses on hydrostatic properties. So what are we covering today? Uh, we're going to look at two important commands in GHS. Uh, the first one is the actual GHS command and that gives you your hydrostatic properties and how to use that for a different range of drafts. And then we're going to look at the cross curves command which is useful when you're submitting your stability information to regulatory agencies. But first quick disclaimer, uh, this presentation is for instruction purposes only. It is not to be used in engineering for construction and I'm not a representative of creative systems. This is only unofficial training based upon my own personal knowledge. If you'd like the official training, you can contact creative systems at the contact information on the bottom of your screen. I highly recommend the official training. It's uh, very detailed and very informative. So let's start off with the good one, the GHS command. Uh, that is actually the command GHS. And what this command does is it reports out hydrostatic properties at the current draft. So if you just type that, just type GHS in your command, uh, it will report, report out the current hydrostatic properties for your vessel at its current draft. And that actually does account for things like the current heel, the current trim, the VCG of your vessel, even the current damage condition. So if some of your tanks are flooded, that's included as well in the hydrostatic properties. Uh, there's a fairly important uh, option that you would like to know about this as well. Um, that's the KM option, which is uh, that normally GHS will report the GMT values out and the GML values, whereas if you do the KM option, uh, then GHS will report KM values, which are essentially um, your stability moment arm. Well, not even stability moment arm, but your stability pivot length uh, without considering VCG of the vessel. So here's a bit of an example. Um, this actually shows you what the output is. So you can see here the last command I typed was just GHS. And here's exactly the kind of output you're going to get from the GHS command. Yeah, so we've got whatever the draft is currently, the trim and heel and VCG state. Then we've got our weight, our center of buoyancy, uh, immersion, um, center, center of flotation, moment true trim, and here's what I was talking about before, is the GML and GMT values. So that's considering the VCG effect. Now, if you do it again, see we've done GHS-KM, um, and see the main difference over here is now we've switched those uh, to have KM values reported out. Now in this case, we've set the VCG at zero, so there's no difference between GM and KM. But in a real case where you've actually got a VCG on your ship, uh, those two will be different. Okay, now GHS command is useful for the current draft range, but what we sometimes really like is uh, the hydrostatic properties for a whole range of drafts. Uh, this is the hydrostatic table. Uh, this is something that would generally be included in any trim and stability booklet, and it's a pretty central idea to stability in hydrostatics. So the way we do this is we do the GHS command, but now we're going to add on a draft specification. And there are two different ways you can do this. Uh, you can type GHS draft equals, and then give it a list of drafts, and you can specify the location if you want. Uh, if you don't specify the location, it's assumed to be at the LCF location. Or you can do it the other way around, and you can give it a range of displacements. So the keyword if you want to do drafts is draft equals. You can type GHS command draft equals range of displacements, or excuse me, range of drafts. Or if you want to do it by the displacement basis, GHS disp equals range of weights. And I'll point out this is actually um, a shorthand notation you can do here. In GHS, you can do it this way, actually. So instead of typing out every single displacement you want, you give the first one, the second one, that establishes the spacing of your displacements, and then type dot, 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 and then your last displacement. Uh, so that works for drafts or displacements. You can actually type it in that way, and GHS will fill in everything in between. 
So here's an example with the draft specification. Um, and you can see I've even specified a location for my draft. And here's what I was talking about, about how you can type just the uh, spacings and GHS will fill in all the range of drafts. And this is the kind of output that you're going to get from that. It's a very nice table of hydrostatic properties. Now we can do it again the other way around. This typing GHS disp equals, and I'm doing displacement intervals of 50 lawn tons. And notice the difference here. So before it was regular spaced interval intervals of a draft. Here it's regularly spaced intervals of displacement. So either one uh, just totally depends on user preference about which way you want to go. Now let's talk a little bit more about that hydrostatic output. Uh, what is it? It's the critical properties of the buoyant hull, and that is just the buoyant section. Now it is specific to a single draft, trim, and heel. Okay, so every single line on there is specific to that draft, but it's also specific to that trim and that heel. And conventionally we normally write hydrostatic output with no trim and no heel, uh, but there are situations where it's useful to know the hydrostatics for a certain trim and heel. Now I want to break down this uh, hydrostatic table a little bit more to show you how to read it. So the first thing you do is you look up your draft that you're interested in, or you look up your weight that you're interested in. You find whichever entry on the table is closest. And then we read over, and we've got the weight at a draft of six feet. And we have these two right here. This is our center of buoyancy. So longitudinal center and vertical center. Now if you want, you can also tell GHS to print out the transverse center as well, but GHS assumes that most ships are symmetrical, so your transverse center of buoyancy should be zero. It should be on center line. Now, here's a nice little piece of information that you can use. Uh, the sinkage information. Uh, this is for when you're asking questions of, say, if I add an extra 50 tons of weight to my ship, how far will I sink down? Now that, that's what this rate is right here. Is it saying 50 tons per centimeter? Uh, so that will actually tell you how far you'll sink down, and, and that gives you the rate, essentially. So you would take 50 tons, divide by 0.5, and that gives you how many centimeters it sinks down. Now, notice how that does change a little bit, with, depending on what your draft is. So it only really works for uh, small changes. Uh, if you're looking at large changes in weight, large changes in draft, uh, then just add it into GHS because GHS actually considers how this number changes as time goes on, or as uh, draft increases. So let's say we've added our weight, now we want to know how it changes our trim. Well the first thing you have to know is what are you trimming about, what's your pivot point? Uh, that's your LCF right here, that's this column. Uh, so the LCF is your pivot point when you're trimming. And you can see here that the LCF does also move a little bit as draft moves up and down. And again, if you're looking at big changes in trim, just add it into GHS because GHS um, does all of these calculations itself. Uh, the whole point of this hydrostatics table is uh, really for the use of operators or simplified situations where you're, where you're pretty much okay doing a rough estimate. And so that, that actually occurs several times, and it's very useful to know. Now, let's say, we've going back to our question of trimming, we found our pivot point. Now, here's your trim moment. So this is actually saying you calculated your moment from your weight that you're adding on. Um, now, and that, that's the moment from your center of buoyancy, I should say. And now, this is the rate. Maybe. Pardon me. Uh, this is the rate at which you will trim for that increased moment. And then we have over here the KML and KMT values, which are actually probably what I would say the most important value out of all those columns is KML and KMT. So that's your potential stability length that you have. Um, it's the potential for stability. It changes depending on a whole series of factors. Uh, 
people that have gone through courses on hydrostatic analysis and stability analysis, uh, you'll understand what those KML and KMT numbers mean. I'm not going to go into them today because they their significance changes a lot depending on what questions you're asking and what your scenario is. Um, and this is not a course on stability, it's a course on GHS. So for the moment, all I'm going to say is that KML and KMT have to do with your vessel stability, and they're very, very important to it. Okay, now just a quick review here. So, a few things. Draft, LCF draft, that, that's one of the important things here. As you'll notice on the table, this gave LCF draft. And that's central, because that is the draft at the location that does not vary with trim. So if I go back, you notice here how at each one of these drafts, the LCF is moving to a different plate, different point so a little bit. This draft does not stay measured at a single location on the ship. It's actually moving to this point, the LCF, every single time. And that's important because that means it's always the draft that does not consider variation from trim. That's a really important thing. Uh, displacement, that's however much weight is going to be supported by your water, or you know, the water that you're sitting in. LCB, TCB, VCB, that's the centers of buoyancy. Um, LCF, that's the longitudinal center of flotation. Uh, you can think of that as your pivot point. And KMT and KML, uh, that's the first half of your metacentric height, basically. Uh, that's how much st stability your ship has to start with. So KMT is the critical one, it's the transverse center, and KML is the longitudinal. Uh, the, way, the reason I say KMT is the critical one is because it's the one that's so much smaller. Uh, you can't really see it very much in this one, but generally KMT is a great deal smaller than KML. Okay, that was GHS command, and everything here was all about um, hydrostatic tables, and it's I've kind of breezed, breezed through the output of the hydrostatic tables because understanding the output has a lot more to do with a course on stability, but I did want you to read, be able to read through those tables and identify the different elements of them. Now let's talk about cross curves. So cross curves of stability. Um, what are cross curves? Well, in the old days, before we had stability programs like GHS, uh, you couldn't just heel the ship over and find out how your healing moment varied with angle. Uh, that was actually a pretty intense computation, took a lot of hand calculations before the days of computers. And so what they did instead was they came up with a thing called a cross curve which basically tells you how much of a moment arm you have for a given heel of angle or a given heel angle and so several regulatory bodies still require you to submit cross curves of stability with any stability documents uh, they're there for use by the operator uh, they stand there as a backup in case your program ever goes down um, and so it's necessary to generate them GHS can generate cross curves of stability, and when you do that, it will consider the current damage condition, the current waves that you have applied to the ship, the initial trim, the VCG, uh, all of that. And so you get the idea that there's a lot of information that you have to define in the ship and with different commands before you issue the cross curves command. Uh, one other one is the angles command that defines the angles of heel that the cross curves will use. So they're not necessarily going to ask you for the angles. Uh, it'll default to using what's already been defined through the angles command. Okay, so step number one is we define the angles command. Um, and what this is going to do is it's defining specific angles that are going to be used for investigating vessel heel. And it just sits as a list in the background that GHS remembers. Um, and so it's sort of like saving yourself some typing effort. Uh, the way it works is the command is angles, A-N-G-L-E-S, and then you give it a list of angles, um, and those are in degrees of heel. 
Okay, so that is in measurement of degrees, and it's a list just like any of the other lists. Um, and just like any of the other lists, you can actually use the dot 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 notation to actually uh, fill out the list. So here's an example of that. Uh, you can see here I've typed angles from 0 to all the way up to 40, and then I've just entered the other angles command to have GHS report it back. And here's the output, so you can actually see this is the full list of angles that GHS has. Okay, now that we've defined the angles, and it's sitting there back in the background in GHS, now we go to the step 2, which is the actual cross curves command. And the way the cross curves work is that they are applied over a range of drafts. Uh, so you have to give it as a draft specification. So we have the command uh, draw cross curves, and then you can do it two different ways. You can give it as a draft at a location. So this works the same way as the GHS command. Um, or you can also give it as a displacement, as a range of displacements. So this part of how to specify those, you're familiar with that. That's the exact same way it worked with the GHS command. It's just now we have a different command here, the CC for cross curves. And that will produce um, the cross curves output for you. And it also does produce not only tables, but also a graph for you, it's, at least if you have your report turned on. So here's an example. I did the cross curves command with a range of displacements. Notice here I've already defined the angles ahead of time. And here are my different angles already being put out. And here are my range of displacements. So we get our tables here. Now it does depend on whatever your current VCG is as well. So you may have to set different VCGs and repeat this for different VCG values. Um, it depends upon the regulations of what, whoever you're submitting your stability information to. I will say by convention generally the cross curves are calculated, calculated with a VCG of zero. Now here's another example. Um, this time we're pumping out the cross curves with a range of regular drafts. And again now you can see it's pumping it out based upon displacement, which is how somebody would want to look this up. But now notice that these are not regularly spaced displacements. Uh, these displacements will match up to these drafts. And again, notice it's still using the angles that we've already defined. So th those angles do not go away when you've used the cross curves command. They constantly sit there in the background until you reissue the angles command to define them new. Okay, so that was the GHS command and the cross curves command. Now let's um, actually get a little bit of practice working with those. So homework number 441, uh, I'd like you to use the fishing vessel model. Uh, you can open that up with the read FV command, and that's the um, FV model. That's just a built-in model for GHS. And I'd like you to set the trim of 5 degrees aft, the VCG of 4.5 feet, so that's 4.5 feet above baseline, and then start by running the GHS command, and do it two different times. One for a draft range from 0.5, one all the way up to 6, and then second, do it for a displacement range, 50, 100, all the way up to 600 lawn tons. And then I'd like you to take that and run the cross curves command. So same trim, same VCG, and here are your angles to run across. So 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. Uh, those are degrees. And same thing, go over a draft range and a displacement range. And be sure to turn on a report so that you can actually see the outputs. Um, especially the nice thing about the outputs is if you have a report for this, uh, both of these commands will produce some very nice graphs for you to look at as well, to get a visual output in addition to just tables. Okay, well, thank you very much. I hope you found this video informative. You can find the homework and the solutions, along with several other tutorials, on dmsonline.us. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. Hey, did you know that there is a magic button down below? Click the like button or even the subscribe button and I will make more videos for you.